I'm going to play three different sounds. They're all at 80 hertz. Dr. Michael Nissenbaum. They're all going to be at the same decibel level. Which one would you rather spend time with? Wind turbines emit different sound patterns depending on which way and how hard the wind is blowing. The different characteristics bother people in different ways. The real question is, do wind turbines cause noise? Yes. Do they cause sleep deprivation? Yes. Is sleep deprivation a problem? Well, of course it is. Well, therefore, we have a completely plausible chain of causation here. Dr. Michael Nissenbaum is a radiologist and public health advocate. He did a survey of how turbines affect the health of people living near the Mars Hill wind farm in Maine. He asked them if their quality of life had changed since the 28 turbines went up. And we got results that showed that there was an unequivocal uh, deterioration in people's mental health. Uh, a deterioration in their sleep quality and an increase in their daytime sleepiness the closer they live to, to wind turbines. Nissenbaum's survey showed that the people who lived closest to the Mars Hill wind farm reported the most ill effects from the turbines, and those effects decreased in homes further away. But even at a distance of three kilometers, definite negative effects were still reported. So we, strictly speaking, we don't really know what the safe distances are yet. Right now in Ontario, turbines are required to be 550 meters away from the nearest house. That is the standard for a lot of regions around the world. From my understanding of the literature and how people behave near these things, 550 meters, I think I described it as insane, because you know there are going to be people being disturbed by having a wind turbine 550 meters from their house. Um, if you go up to two kilometers, which some people suggest, then that will drop the incidence of, of issues with these things a lot. But you'll still have some people still sensitive at two kilometers. And what they are sensitive to isn't just volume, it's also the rhythm of the noise. So one is a pure tone, and the others are amplitude modulated at once per second and three per second. The once per second is about what you get from, uh, from wind turbines. And at least my subjective feeling about it is that the one, once per second is even more annoying than the three times per second. It's the basics of the most rudimentary medical education that's, that sleep is a vital component of maintaining health. If you lose sleep over a, a protracted period of time, it will affect essentially every body system. It'll affect your mental health, it'll affect your physical health, including in the case of cardiovascular disease and diabetes and so on, um, early mortality. And, and the, the, this is settled science, this is not speculative. And all of this can derive from chronic sleep disturbance. Dr. Nissenbaum says the symptoms he found in his study group are the same as other doctors have found in other places around the world. The complaints from people who live close to wind farms are remarkably consistent. Another common thread in all these locations is that no one had done any substantive health studies before placing turbines next to houses. I think uh, we got into a situation where no one said, stop, let's wait a minute. These things are very large machines. They're really big industrial complexes. And maybe we should look at them with the same scrutiny we look at factories being set up or airports or new highways cutting through areas that we should look at the local impacts and, and design appropriately before we just license these things up for construction. Wind turbines make noise. Whether that noise is within acceptable levels is up for debate until more sophisticated measuring systems are used. But what about the sound waves you can't hear? They get tinnitus, which is a ringing in their ears. They get stuffed up ears. And they get this verti vertigo, which is a sensation of either dizziness or unsteadiness. 
When machines as big as these are put up in a quiet setting, the landscape changes, and so do the sounds flowing on the winds. And some of those sounds can be complex. A new study has determined that wind turbines emit subsonic sound waves called infrasound that can make certain sensitive people incredibly ill. So you have this conflict where um, people are assuming the ear is insensitive and it's not. Dr. Alex Salt is a professor at Washington University Medical School in St. Louis. He specializes in the physiology of inner ear fluids. Um, lots of things create low levels of infrasound. Um, if you're driving your car with the window just cracked open slightly, you can get that woof 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 no noise in the car. Sometimes in buildings, you can get bothered by the air duct noise if there's a fault in the air conditioning system. So if the pressure in that building is oscillating up and down slowly, um, I mean, people start complaining of dizziness and of all these symptoms that people are reporting. Infrasound is below the threshold of most people's hearing. But it still causes cells in the ear to react, and in some cases, that can be very distressing. Dr. Salt says that infrasound needs to be taken seriously by the people who put up turbines. So ignoring that sound is a bit like visible light, saying, um, OK, we'll just look at visible light, so go and lay on a beach all day. It's not going to harm you. It's not going to, you know, it, you won't get sunburned. Um, if, because if you, if, you ignore, if you ignore the part you can't see, um, you're going to come to the wrong conclusion. The current generations of wind turbines are very large. A 1.5 megawatt machine is taller than a 35-story building. The big thing that generates infrasound is different wind speeds going into different parts of the rotor. So that what's called turbulent inflow into the rotor makes them generate a lot of infrasound. It's going to disturb their sleep. So if it wakes them up and they can't get back to sleep again, that has serious long-term effects on people's health. Um, they get tinnitus, which is a ring in their ears. They get fullness, um, which is sensation of pressure stuffed up ears. And they get this verti vertigo, which is sensation of either dizziness or unsteadiness, more like. And all of those things come from, um, can potentially come from changes in the ear caused by the low frequency sound. Taking accurate infrasound measurements is very difficult considering all of the other sounds that exist in the environment. As a result, Salt did his work in a lab using guinea pigs whose ear canals resemble humans. Salt believes more research is needed into the effects of infrasound. So you have engineers making judgments about health effects and saying there's no health effects. Um, and these people ha have engineering background and have no, no concept at all of, of what the real health effects are. I mean, they, they, haven't, they haven't come to the, the scientists who understand the problem better. In Denmark, the minimum distance between a house and a turbine is equal to four times the height of the machine. Some people say that's still not far enough. But the turbine manufacturers claim that the newer, bigger machines will be quieter than the older ones. They produce just more noise. Dr. Henrik Möller is a professor at Aalborg University specializing in acoustics and electrical engineering. The noise emitted by the turbine is nearly proportional to the uh, electric power that it can produce. His work has cast doubt on industry claims that larger turbines never exceed legal sound limits. At issue is how they measure the turbine sound. The wind comes from, from there, and it's usually measured downwind from the turbine uh, in a distance like this. You have to make sure that when you measure here, you measure all the noise that is emitted from the turbine. If the turbine emits more sound in that direction, perpendicular to the rotor plane, then you won't measure it here. The noise source is up in the air. But larger turbines don't just make more noise, they also make a different kind of noise. You get more low frequencies from wind turbines um, that are larger. If you go inside, close door and windows, there will not be a lot of high frequency noise inside. But the low frequency noise still propagates through windows, uh, through the roof and, and building structures. 
A lorry standing next to your house is one of the most common uh, things that people uh, compare it to. It may also sound like a f an old fridge which you don't like in, the, in your kitchen and therefore you close the door to the kitchen. But w if it's a wind turbine, it goes in everywhere, so you can't just c close the door. It, it still is uh, 